All right, so uh, a lot of reaction keeps coming in over this issue today to former President Trump using the word bloodbath at a campaign rally in Ohio over the weekend. He says he was talking about what will happen to the American car makers if he loses the election. Watch this. We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. So here's just a sampling of how that is going over in the media. Watch. He's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? There's something wrong here. It's just bullshit. He knew what he was doing. We're not stupid. Americans aren't stupid. He was talking about a bloodbath. Sometimes a bloodbath means a bloodbath. We have seen January 6th. We've seen that he's led an insurrection. So no, we, we're not taking it out of context because the context is his history and his life. Okay, with that, we bring in Carl Rove, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President George W. Bush, and a Fox News contributor, Media Buzz host Howie Kurtz, who aired his interview with former President Trump over the weekend, and nationally syndicated radio host Hugh Hewitt, who has interviewed uh, the former president many times. Um, good to have all of you with us. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, let me go down the line and get your reaction to this controversy today. Carl, let me start with you. Uh, over the top and uh, a reason why people hate the media. Uh, it was clear. You read a transcript of it, and his reference to the bloodbath is when he talks about Chinese electric vehicles being made in China or made in Mexico and imported into the United States. It, and, and that's the context, and that gets dropped out. Now, there are other things that he says that the media could have gone after. He refers to the people who are in jail over uh, January 6th as hostages, people who beat up the police. He says in a completely different context, not sure that that if he doesn't get elected, you'll never have another election in the country. Those are legitimate things to ask him about, but instead they pick the thing in the speech that sounds, if you take the word bloodbath, out of context makes it sound terrible when it, he's talking very specifically about what will happen to American manufacturing, uh, the auto industry specifically, if he doesn't get elected. So uh, over the top and as a result undermines the confidence of the, of the American public and the media. Howie, what's your take? This bloodbed coverage is a outrage and totally wrenched out of context. As you showed, he's talking about jobs before and after. Now, there's been other times when Trump has signaled the possibility of political violence. This is not one of them. And, you know, interestingly, Martha, in my Mar-a-Lago interview with the former president, I asked him about using words like vermin and poisoning of the blood and why he does that in describing illegal migrants. And he acknowledged to me that he does that over top language, inflammatory language, in order to drive media coverage. That's quite an admission given the echoes of Nazi Germany, but he says he does it because he wants people on his turf debating his issues, and if he uses what he called politically correct language, uh, it doesn't really resonate. Hugh Hewitt, your reaction to this bloodbath issue? Well, I spent three hours this morning, Martha, doing nothing but the story of bloodbath and Howie's interview, because the former president is a rating straw and people want to talk about it. Carl is being generous and calling it over the top. It's a lie to actually suggest that the former president was calling for physical violence. He wasn't. And I'm glad you played both the beginning and the end of that because it's clearly, uh, clearly, I mean, there isn't any doubt here. There would be no doubt in any objective reading. He was talking about what would happen to the automobile industry in America if the uh, Chinese funded and Mexican constructed EVs were allowed into the country without tariffs. I don't happen to agree with him on the policy, but I do agree this was completely taken out of context because it wasn't about journalism. It was about super serving a hardcore audience with what they wanted to hear, that Donald Trump is a tyrant who has blood on his hands and more to come. Yeah, Hugh, staying with you for a moment, though, when you listen to Joe Scarborough, he's saying that you are wrong. He's saying, you know, clearly there's an inference in there that's larger than just the auto industry. And if you don't get it, you're just a cable idiot. That's what he's saying here. Well, I'm not going to call Joe stupid like he's calling all of us stupid on this panel. Because I used to go on Joe's show back when he was in love with Trump. And Trump would call in and they would both beat up on yeah, me. Yeah, I remember that. So Joe has changed over time as ratings has required him to change and the MSNBC audience has required him to change. But
But this morning was laughable. Joe knows it, but he's got a ratings to deliver, and he delivered it this morning. You know, it's interesting, Howie, because what, what the former president said to you, you know, I do believe that he's a politician and prior to that a businessman who believes there's no such thing as bad publicity. And so if you drop certain words into the, into the ether, you're going to get talked about. You know, the great Hugh Hewitt spent three hours talking about this this morning. Um, and here's a soundbite uh, on the issue of the enemy of the people phrase that he has used from your interview, Howie. Watch. They really don't like enemy of the people. I would be honored to, to do that if they would do it right. If they would, you know, they're like the policeman or policewoman. They're like uh, the police. And frankly, they keep our country honest in a certain way if they do their job properly. And they haven't been doing it properly. How are your thoughts on that exchange? Well, I sense that he might be open to some kind of a ceasefire because he's using fake news yeah. a lot less. And he almost went all the way, but then he said, you know, but they're not doing it properly, so it's, there's no ceasefire as of now. You know, just a quick thought on the coverage of this interview at Mar-a-Lago, uh, which is that, for example, I got the former president to say that Vladimir Putin, whose name he had never even mentioned in connection with Alexei Navalny's prison mm -hmm. murder, probably was responsible. And here are some of the headlines. Trump couldn't bring himself to condemn Putin for Alexei Navalny's death. Trump delivers head-spinningly awkward answer to new question about Putin. Now, he did say, I don't know. He can't prove it. I can't prove it. We all know it's true. This would not have happened uh, without Putin uh, being notified and acquiescing in this. But it just shows you that a lot of people bring their anti-Trump bias to the table or pro-Trump bias uh, when it comes to these interviews, where I try to be straight down the middle and give him a chance to say what he wanted to say. Absolutely. Um, it was a very interesting interview. Carl, you know, another thing that came up in the interview I thought was kind of interesting. He was asked about Nikki Haley and said, you know, she, well, she has some talent. And everybody's wondering about the VP picks for all of the candidates who are still in the running here. Um, where do you think that whole story is going? Well, I, I find it hard to believe that he's going to be as big uh, and strong-minded as Ronald Reagan was and pick his principal opponent in the primary process as his running mate. But uh, it was a good remark for him to make, and he should have, frankly, made it the night that he beat her in South Carolina. Uh, when he was in Iowa, he was humble, he was gracious, he was complimentary of his opponents. We didn't see that in New Hampshire for certain, and, and the, mm -hmm. the moment for him to begin uniting the party was in South Carolina. So nice of him to say it now, wish he had said it earlier. Hugh, you have put out a short list of people you think are potential VP. What did, what did you think about that comment? Did you give it any significance? I don't think he will pick Nikki Haley. That, that got a little too rough at the end. I think Carl is right that we haven't got the same kind of dynamics that we had in 1980. I like Senators Cotton and Ernst, Mike Pompeo, someone not designed to pick up a state or an ethnicity or a particular demographic, but someone designed to attack, attack, attack every day on message about the border, about crime, about inflation, about appeasement abroad. So I'm looking for someone who can stay on message more than anything else. All right, quick uh, 30 seconds, Howie, on this Biden story about his rants in the West Wing. What did you make of that? Well, I think the president is frustrated by the coverage and his campaign and his abysmally low uh, polling numbers and the fact that uh, Trump uh, seems to be beating him, you know, eight months, long time to go and all yeah. of that. Uh, I certainly don't think Biden has gotten great coverage on the age issue and a lot of people, a lot of Democrats having doubts about him. Uh, so it just shows you that we've managed to tick off both sides, yeah. which is the job of the press, by exactly. the way. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, it also might show you that he has some fight in him, and maybe that was the point of those stories as well. Yeah. So we'll see. What a great panel. I hope you'll all come back soon. Hugh Hewitt, Howie, good to see you as Thanks. always. Carl, Thanks. great to have you with us as, all, as well, and great interviews uh, over the weekend. Thank you, Howie. Thanks, all. Appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.